That's where CNBC's Morgan Brennan is, and she is joined exclusively by Palmer Lucky of Andrel Industries. Morgan, take it away. Melissa, thank you. So the big news for Andrel today, Palmer, it's great to be sitting here with you, um, is that you've unveiled something called Roadrunner. It's a reusable missile. It's powered by AI. This is unlike anything we've seen within this market. Walk me through it. So Roadrunner, we just announced last night, is an AI-powered, jet-powered drone interceptor that we've been building for the last two years to counter the types of drone threats that you're seeing increasingly strike at U.S. troops, at partner troops, at allied troops. We've seen these threats get much more advanced over the last few years. They're faster. They're more maneuverable. They're carrying much more dangerous payloads. They're attacking from much longer ranges. We started building Roadrunner because we wanted to build a vehicle that would allow you to address those threats and take them out long before they get close. To you. So it can take off and land vertically on its uh, two thrust vector turbojet engines, fly at very high speeds, maneuver very aggressively, and go after targets that never would have really been possible for our previous. Uh, drone interceptors to be able to address. Yeah, I mean, there's already, to your, to your point, there's already demand in the marketplace for this. We've got a, a war in Ukraine. Yep. We've got this war in the Middle East, um, troops that need to be protected in Syria, and then, of course, the DOD looking to modernize the military. Do you already have customers? Yeah, we already have for this product Roadrunner M, which is the weaponized variant of Roadrunner, which is a more general purpose jet powered drone that we build. Uh, we already have a U.S. government customer. It's already been operationally assessed, and we are in production right now, ramping up production into larger quantities. And you, you mentioned that there's demand for these things. I want to be clear. It's not just demand for systems like this. It's for large quantities of systems that can defend against these types of aerial threats. Something we've seen in Ukraine, something we've seen elsewhere, is just a very limited number of things are being made, like numerically, not the number of different products, but numerically, the, the quantities of these individual products is not matching up to the number of threats that our adversar adversaries are building, whether it's Russia or Iran or China or a wide range of others. Yeah, uh, and it's such a key point, especially at a time where restocking of supplies uh, for the military yep. is very much in focus right now. Andrew's very disruptive in terms of not only your business model and how you develop and then bring stuff to market. You, you spend your own money and then you and then you basically pitch it out to Defense Department and others. We're, um, we're, we're more of a defense product also, company than a defense contractor yes, is how I like to think yes, about it. Um, but also, you're very aggressive with your price points. Who are you competing against? Well, we're very aggressive with our price points because we have to be. We're a new entrant. We don't do that much cost plus contracting. We use our own money to build products and then make them work, and then we sell them to the government. That's the vast majority of our business model. That means that we're incentivized to move quickly. We're incentivized to reuse technology that we've built in the past, our AI platform, Lattice, uh, propulsion systems, battery systems, flight control, software. Uh, we're incentivized to reuse those things, and so that allows us to have lower price points than if we were developing all those things from scratch every time, which is what you're incentivized to do as a cost plus contractor. Of course, I'm going to ask you, there's been reports that you are potentially in the market to raise more capital right now, uh, maybe through not the traditional funding rounds. A, is that true? And B, <laughs> how does that set you up maybe here in the coming years for a potential IPO? Look, Andrel's going to IPO. And you know, that's not even huge news. If people don't know, they haven't been watching my Twitter and they haven't been paying attention to our interviews. The reality is the U.S. government really likes companies that are publicly traded for their major programs. They really like being able to outsource some of the due diligence to you know, Wall Street more broadly, the Securities Exchange Commission, all these other entities that are going to be able to make sure you're not cooking your books, that you actually have the money you need to capitalize things properly. They can have a little more confidence that you're not going to up and disappear and go out of business. And uh, that's one of the reasons that we want to be a publicly traded company. Our customers are explicitly telling us they would like us to be a publicly traded company. Uh, but I think there's other strong reasons for us to be a publicly traded company as well and to be something that people in America can be part of outside of just our private investors, whom I absolutely love and adore. Many of them yeah. are people I worked with in my previous company, Oculus, which I sold to com Facebook for a few billion dollars. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I, I feel like I'd love to, do, you know, love to do good by them, but I'd like to do, do something with everybody, too. Okay.